you know, occasionally there is a dark to dark. That's how I, when I first started guiding down here and fishing down here and trying to learn, I did a lot of days dark to dark. And your learning accelerates so much faster. And every day that we can stay out there from dark to dark, we're gonna learn way more. Oh, fish on. Got a nibble. Oh, look at the size of that one. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Oh yeah! Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I got you continue. I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, Relax. he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. That was an awesome day, man, fishing sunrise to sunset. Yeah, sometimes you gotta go out there sunrise to sunset. I like to get up super early in the morning and watch the day kind of materialize. And we have a fish here, the tarpon. It's a nocturnal fish and it's on that same program. It likes the dark. So the first thing in the morning, you get to see them kind of get active. You know, and my favorite thing is the evening because I, I get out there and I know that, that half an hour before the, the sun hits the water, the tarpon get active again. They're looking forward to that evening bite and they start rolling and I look forward to that all day. Well, on this day, we got the best of both of them. We, you know, occasionally, you know, there is a dark to dark. That's how I, when I first started guiding down here and fishing down here and trying to learn, I did a lot of days dark to dark. If you're spending eight hours on the water, maybe that's a full day. If you're spending 12 hours on the water, that's like a day and a half. So your learning accelerates so much faster. And every day that we can stay out there from dark to dark, we're gonna learn way more. Well, and you know, when the weather's nice, you gotta take advantage of it. We had a perfect day. We started off that day, left Talks Case super early, um, just ran to a couple spots nearby, and, um, and these small to medium-sized tarpon were rolling all over the place. There's a nice roller. That's a big, big, pretty decent sized fish. 12 o'clock, ooh, just tipped his tail up. Yep. Ooh, multiple fish. I've seen a couple right there. That was pretty cool. I guess that's him waking to the left, but I also see something. No, it's right there. See the bubbles that just came <clears throat> up? They've been rolling right in the same spot. I'm gonna get you over to the right a little bit. And they are a great target. It's really fun to get in there. Some mornings they will bite like crazy and other mornings they can be very difficult. On this morning, they were being a little difficult. We were seeing them and we were having lots and lots of targets, which is fun, you know? And that's the thing about the tarpon um, is that it's so visual, even under low light conditions that they're rolling and they're eating things and you're, you're seeing where they are and making shots at them. And if you do it absolutely correctly, sometimes they'll they'll bite it. Go ahead, I'd throw it at 11 right now. That's it. Okay, I see him in the water. That's a good one. Come on. There you go. Keep coming. Come on. Trying to take it from me. Got a little nibble there, huh? Got a nibble. That's a good cast, really good. Got a nibble. In, on this day, I felt like we did it correctly a lot of times and they just weren't playing ball. Okay, wait a second. Now go. Boy, you should be close there. Yeah, he ate it. Didn't get it. Oh, dude. Flashed all I over. Know, I saw him do it twice. He came after it twice, but he never, the line never, never felt a single thing. You know, you can stick in there for, for so long, but even as, as we both know, as that light comes up, that activity is going to, to drop off and they're gonna be rolling less, they're gonna be eating less, and by, you know, maybe, maybe 7.30 a lot of mornings, it's over. So we just kinda had that little short window, let's go give those a try, and then on to the next thing. I'll tell you what, man, these fish have gotten, gotten tough. These little babies, sometimes, sometimes they're easy and sometimes they are not. And today, they are not. The tide is getting right for the ocean fish to move, so. Maybe get out there and find a uh, there was one right spot. I like your suggestion that the big ones might be fighting over. They could be. Well, let's go right up the shoreline and finish out that corner, and then maybe I'll get a good shot. 
I've had plenty of good shots. Maybe I'll find a fish that'll eat it. Yeah, baby. <laughs> you did the bait and switch on me, man. That's Here, cool. catch that jack. <laughs> The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Hawks K. Find what lures you. Lowrance, America's number one fish finder. Waypoint, the destination for outdoor entertainment. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. And by Ameritrail Trailers, Daiwa. Marathon, Black Rifle Coffee Company, Salt's Gone, Power Pole, and Reflex Boat Decking. As that sun got up higher, you know, really the whole, um, you know, middle day type options start to materialize. Um, you know, the sun's getting high, we can actually see the bodies of the fish in the water. Um, you know, and, and as we, you know, looked at switching up, we, we found a few more spots where the tarpon were laid up. We'd see a few big tarpon laying there and, and some good close follows and things like that, but they, they weren't eaten. Um, and then as we were looking, you know, down this one bank where, where we were expecting to see tarpon, and we were seeing a few, um, all of a sudden you look over there and you're like, what are those? Something's right there. Jacks or something. What are they? I don't know. Maybe I was seeing things. No, there was fish. I mean, they were right under the bow. I thought you were seeing them. I'm assuming they were jacks. And, and we weren't sure, were they, were they jacks? Were they, you know, permit, what were they? And all of a sudden you're like, whoa, permit everywhere. Oh, here they are. Tiny ones. Dang. Oh, he's calling me, he's on me. Did he get it? Come on, he's tailing all over it. There he is. You got him? Got him. Nice job, dude. Could have caught that one on fly for sure. That's awesome. 100% could have caught that on there? fly. Are there more up there? Huh? Are there more up there? Uh, yeah, but they're getting ready to really blow out. That was so cool, man. That little fish turned around, tailed up like that. So cool. That was so cool. I over really you. one of the, you know, despite the size of this fish, really one of the coolest permit I think I've ever caught. I ain't caught him yet. Well, <laughs> whatever. In my book, that's all I need right there. I mean, seriously. That fish, I threw up in front of him, he turned around, mm, that was so awesome. <laughs> My favorite, and the reason why you know it didn't hit me that that was a permit right away is because there were a lot of them and they were very small. And when, when you see a lot of small permit together, it's not kind of like you're, you're expecting to see, you know, you know, a regular size permit in the Florida Keys is 12 to 15 pounds. You know, that's kind of a, a good size one like this. These guys were really small and it took me a second to figure out exactly what we were looking at. This is the coolest permit, man. He's about the size of your palm of your hand. That was so cool. The that way was. that that fish did that was so awesome. He tailed up on it and then he turned around and tailed up on it again. Wow. And I knew, I was like, I'm, I know I'm in front of him. And I like lifted it up off the bottom a little bit and let it drop again. You feel him hit it? No, I mean, I watched him. Mm -hmm. He was like, Vroom. <laughs> it was so cool. The trick with the little permit is finding a bait that's small enough because I've always said that you know a real trophy fish around here is 30 pounds and I know it's 30 pounds when you can stick your whole fist in its mouth. So even a 30 pounder is going to have a mouth that is big enough just to you know like that right but those smaller permit their really mouths are really, really small and so you if you're fishing a, a really large crab they just bat it around that was an issue with these guys is that we had you know pretty pretty good sized crabs and we had to go down to the smallest one that we could possibly get and i even felt like maybe if we had small flies that might even be more effective for those particular fish because they were aggressive but their mouths were so small that they were having trouble eating the crabs that we had i can tell you exactly what's going on here i do believe that we are in the spawning season and this fish is just slightly too small to spawn. God, this fish is so beautiful. Yeah. And the rest of them are out on the wreck, right? I would think that the big ones are. And you notice all the ones we see, we've seen so far, have been like like this. Yeah.
That is cool. We got the right rod. This is like a bluegill rod. <laughs> That's good for those light crabs. I know, light crabs and small fish. Look how beautiful this thing is. That, is. that thing is perfect. That is cool. Look at him, man. You wonder why you can't catch one of a big, <laughs> big crab. Now, a 30 pounder, I've always said, you know, a 30 pounder, you can put your fist inside of his mouth. This thing is, you know, you can barely, it, it doesn't have a very large mouth. So you gotta use a tiny fly or a little crab or a jig. But that's, that's part of the thing. I mean, look at that. Uh -huh. So the, his mouth, a 30 pounder's mouth is like that. Wow. That's a beautiful fish. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We might try a fly. Catch one on fly probably right up in there. All right, man. Good job, Tom. That was awesome. That is a cool fish. See you, buddy. It was. That's amazing, man. I don't know if that's about as many permanent as I've seen in one spot except for a spawning situation. Well, I mean, I mean, this gosh. is some sort of other type of situation like pre-spawn or wow. like before the real action starts. <laughs> All right, well, let me pull you through there. All right. Well, I say we run around and start from the beginning. You know, what was interesting is we had seen some Jack Crevels and we had seen some Permit, and the Jack Crevel and the Permit are similar fish with completely different behavior. I think I have them all up here. Yep, I got them all. You got them? Coming at me. Kind of look like Jacks. Dude. Got him. Do you really? Jack. That's cool. I, I stopped that whole that whole school stopped as soon as I twitched it. I thought, oh, we found the right thing now. I just got one to eat. Just ate my crab. They're eating it. Did you get him? Yeah, baby. <laughs> you did the bait and switch on me, man. That's Here, cool. catch that jack. <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting that we were seeing the jacks and the permit there, and we actually got a double where one of us caught a jack yeah. and one of us caught a permit. Yeah. And then we could get them right next to one another and just, it, you know, you catch a lot of jacks, you catch a lot of permit, but it's not that often that you have them just right next to one another and you can see the differences. You got a jack on this side and a permit on, you got a permit, look at a jack, both in the same family, different behavior, different fish. One gets a lot more street care. I promise you this fights harder than what you got. <laughs> promise. Yeah, but normally mine are a lot harder to catch. <laughs> the schools we saw the first time were all permit. I don't think there was any yeah. jacks mixed in. No, there weren't. But this, there was a shark around. The permit will follow ah. sharks too, but the that jacks is cool. really fell up. Huh? Wow. Talk about cool. Look at this guy. That's one of the smaller permanent. Yep, I really believe that's what's going on is the, a lot of the big ones are out spawning right now. And the small ones are right up in here. Wow. Now look at the difference in those two fish. Yeah. A lot of people have never seen that difference. You know, while one would be one way and yeah. that one's just a little wider, got yeah. bigger dorsal, bigger anal fin, and the Jack Crevel, you know, if you look at the mouth structure, this yeah. one's got a bunch of teeth, crushers in there, and this one has soft, yep. smooth. Yep, and rubber lips. Smooth, but a crusher. That's why they like crabs, because they get crushers in their throat. Boy, he's strong. Strong, but pretty little guy. Yeah, it's gorgeous. You know what's cool too? Is this size, their, their fins are so much longer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a diff different look. Yeah, I mean, that's as, about as pretty as a permit ever is. And I mean, I certainly like looking at a 40 pounder, but <laughs> that one is just perfect signature, yeah. signature size. <laughs> That is so cool, That's man. Right, man. Wow. All right, let me try this little fly. All right. So for many people, trailing a boat down the road is one of the most stressful things that they're going to do all day related to their day of fishing. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One is uh, just, just poor maintenance of the trailer. 
if, if they haven't been fishing for six months, um, they go out there and sure enough, um, the trailer lights don't work when they go to hook it up. Maybe there's a flat tire. These are things that, so simple maintenance can help. Make sure you check your trailer lights before you go, check your air pressure on your tires. And then some of the other things is just getting a high quality trailer. If I'm gonna spend the money on a nice boat, the trailer is something we shouldn't skimp on. Uh, Ameritrail here builds the best trailers. They're constantly refining their product. A couple of things that are just, you know, game changers for me as far as simplicity and uh, safety is the hubs. They, their hubs are sealed. You don't have to grease the hubs. They're guaranteed for 100,000 miles. The tires are super high quality. I know that besides put, checking the air pressure on the tire, I don't have to worry about the tire blowing down the road. And that is a problem with, with some cheaper trailers. The harnesses, the electric, um, it, it, it always works. I am confident that my trailer lights are gonna work every time I go, go fishing. So a high quality trailer is definitely a great starting point. The simple um, basic safety. And then as far as taking care of it, I will make sure that after every launch, I'm gonna spray it off with fresh water and I'll even go one step further. I'll make sure I spray it off with the salt scone um, in and out of the tires, the wheel wells, the brakes, everything like that. And that guarantees that there's no corrosion and the trailer's gonna be ready to go next time I go. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Yeti. And by Berno and Rod Holders. Wiley X. Nikon. Buff. Lithium Pros and Golden Boat Lifts. Did you know you can get every episode of Saltwater Experience completely free on Waypoint TV? Go to waypointtv.com and find out how you can download the app or find it on any smart TV. And if that's not enough, you can find the Tom Rowland Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you find podcasts. And we'd love to have you as a follower on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You know, we, we just milked those those uh, permit for a while there. It was incredible. Just you know, every pass down that bank, we'd see a school. Um, after catching a few of those, that tide started to change. It, you know, and once that outgoing tide started, it really kind of the permit moved out of that spot. And and I also knew that it was time to go tarpon fishing. Yeah, you love that late evening tarpon fishing, and that was one of the most beautiful evenings ever. And it was so signature Florida Keys, slick, calm tarpon rolling everywhere, sun going down. Whether you catch them or not, you're just lucky to be out there. Oh, fish on. Got a nibble. Oh, look at the size of that one. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. You see that air swim? Gosh, that was a big fish, huh? Yeah. Tides were right, it's the right time of year. It was, you know, it was just, we had to be out there. If it didn't disappoint, they started rolling in towards us and had a couple of live baits out there. And, and sure enough, you know, big bite right on the surface on a live mullet, just just crazy explosion. Mm -hmm. Tarpon jumping out of the air. It's coming up. Oh yeah! That was great. That's big one. Boy, they get happy when that weather gets right, doesn't it? That's don't right. They? It's all about the weather, man. Isn't it just amazing? What a difference in attitude. That guy didn't chase it, he just hammered it. You know, we were marking them earlier in the week and uh, you knew they were there, they just weren't biting. Go ahead and go forward towards them. Coming up, come on. Jump for us one more time. Oh, there he goes, see you, buddy. Sweet. What happened, a nah. yeah, he, he, he was. I was even feeling his head shape. I think it was wrapped around the gill plate or something. Very right. cool just super cool, you know, chased that guy around for a while and, and uh, ended up, you know, jumping off. It seemed like right after we, we, we had that fish on, um, the wind fell out. Yeah, and, and it gets as nice as it can get. And, you know, tarpon are rolling all over the place. They come up and they're eating everything. They're eating shrimp and crabs. They're busting stuff on the surface. There's mullet around, there's bait around. 
Sometimes they'll key into what you have. Other times, you know, it, either way, again, with a tarpon, it's like so visual and you're in this incredible situation. Just, a, just an amazing time to be out there. Rich, I don't know what's going on here, but this is an incredible <laughs> scene. These fish pouring in here like this. Beautiful. I would it? love to have gotten a bite. And I'll tell you what, man, just seeing this is, is truly incredible. It's been a fun day, man, that's for sure. That's incredible. That's a scene. pretty cool experience right there, man. That was pretty awesome, even if we don't hook one. <laughs>